So I'd like to introduce Volker Politz from Imagination Technologies. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. <coughs> so what do we say? <coughs> Good afternoon. Uh, yeah, nice to, nice to be here. And uh, thanks for saying I'm the best presenter. I've seen nobody else. So I'm the pres best presenter around here. Um, I'm going to talk about uh, fundamentally a uh, few I things. Right, uh, so let me let me get this started uh, and, 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 and how to do the smart things. So the first slide is really I what. First of all, imagination. So as far as uh, uh, I'm concerned, I'm not sure everybody here knows what imagination is. Uh, who, who, who have heard about imagination technologies? Yeah, you, you, you don't know. I'm very disappointed, I have to say that. Imagination technologies, we're an IP provider, right? Um, we create semiconductor IP, which our partners, inclu inclusive Qualcomm, for instance, license and make chips. Uh, we are in your Wi-Fi chips. We are MIPS, MIPS processors, which is maybe known. Uh, we work with people like TSMC and other foundries. Um, we are very famous for graphics and GPU and video. Uh, you may have heard about a certain fruit company in Cupertino making their own chips. That's uh, the graphics uh, which you might have heard of from us. And we have connectivity, uh, IP such as Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. Okay. Now, I, I need to get used to this one. What I want to do in this is talk about another some eyes. I, I, I already mentioned imagination. I'm going to talk about IoT, AI. Okay, 5G, that doesn't work, but it's, it's a, another kind of I, 5G, 5G. And how doing a blend of these can create a smart thing. So a blend of IoT, AI, artificial intelligence, and 5G modem connectivity. Um, how can we create something smart? And what I want to achieve is that you, ladies and gentlemen, uh, at the end of my presentation, know how to do a smart thing which is intelligent, always connected and cute. Let's see how we do this. Let me start with 5G. So um, a number of uh, people in the phone industry are very familiar with uh, application processors like they are in the phones. That's like the main processor, your mobile PC, so to speak. And uh, we in the PC, when we bought a personal computer, we used to s stick in a modem card at some stage uh, in these cases, it's, it's a part of the AP or an extra chip. Um, so uh, in, in, in this case, the modem processor is, is here the, the main part, talking about 5G with a number of components such as RF, uh, uh, physical layers and stacks, and of course the processor. And if you look at the left side, 5G is very clever. Fifth generation mobile Basically what it does, it uh, they couldn't really agree five different standards and they said they're all 5G. So we have five, three, uh, three different cornerstones in 5G. One is what everybody wants in a handset, m namely the top one here with very high data rates, uh, with using carrier aggregation and MIMO technologies to get to those data rates. On the other hand, on the left uh, bottom side, uh, it's what we call massive machine type communication, where, where really the classic IoT case is the use case. Uh, ideally, a battery driven device means uh, a, a sensor somewhere in the field or somewhere outside with a battery, low power, lot of data, and very easy to use. And on the right hand side, at the bottom, it's a blend of the two, but with a focus on security and uh, determinism. Uh, that's the low latency and the strong security and very reliable. Um, some people here, including myself, talk about connected cars. That's where that comes into play. Okay, When we really, for the future autonomous driving car, require a very secure and uh, deterministic uh, wireless connectivity, that's where this comes into play. Of course, the other parts as well. So talking about this, how can you make it hap happen? And so I told you already that a modern uh, modem structure you see there, there is a modem processor which uh, addresses a number of these things. So 
uh, apologies, I have to talk about our CPU, which we license for these designs, called MIPS. So, in case of the f uh, uh, 5G and LTE, we are using MIPS uh, processors for, well, running the, the stacks, running vo uh, 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 voice over LTE, uh, L1 control stack and physical layer, and we also have the uh, uh, hardware DSP accelerator, respectively uh, DSP uh, uh, instruction set extensions. So it's a very uh, uh, um, compact and, and effec effective way, an efficient way to, to create a modem based around this processor. Um, the key differentiators for a MIP CPU, which you may have not been using, I need to talk, uh, talk to this, um, is what we call hardware multi-threading, which makes it extremely deterministic. Uh, hardware virtualization and uh, uh, very low interrupt uh, uh, latency and high performance. Uh, one word about the virtualization, we took a cloud concept to the CPU and can divvy up this CPU basically into separate firewalled memory areas which makes A, the uh, software cost of ownership very low, and B, makes it very secure, because those things can be isolated. And if you pair that with a security such as a, a root of trust, you can create multiple trusted execution environments rather than only one. That is the key thing, and especially in a very compact situation where you want to keep firmware away from application software but want to have only one core, you can now divvy up this thing rather than using multiple cores. Very compact for IoT modems. Um, the good news is uh, I can tell you a lot of stuff, but we are actually field proven. We are shipping in a number of LTE products, um, like uh, LTE dongles, IoT kits, tablets, and so I'm going to show some of these examples just to give you an idea of what's out there. Um, the, uh, the processor is also scalable. That means we have a very uh, a, a, a range of cores, which is not... We have three fundamental core members, but they're all scalable and configurable in itself, number of cores, N and N. So they go from very low power, NO, NB, narrowband IoT, all up to the CAT-M for high performance LTE. I'm afraid I uh, can't disclose details, but there will be very soon some very interesting press releases uh, which confirm the deployment of these type of CPUs at the low power in this in this application so uh, uh, as i said anyway uh, uh, from the nb iot over the advanced advanced pro and up to 5g uh, with uh, rel 15 and beyond so if i now go and take the requirements which we've seen already the three corners of the standard triangle and map that onto mips you can see how that maps mips <laughs> MIPS maps, so now it's, now, now, <laughs> now, it's, now it's getting messy. How we can map MIPS onto MIPS or something like that. Anyway, on the high data side, we can deploy uh, hardware multi-threading. Uh, we have uh, multi-core designs and more importantly these days, multi-cluster uh, coherency if needed. On the lower uh, side, obviously, we have a very small area with a very low power. And in case of the uh, highly secure ultra reliability, you want a very low latency for the interrupts and the deterministic uh, uh, behavior and uh, in this case paired with security to keep the modem away from any application site so no hacker can uh, uh, come in and, and disrupt uh, stuff and download programmable code to your engine or something like that. So the other eye I was talking about was a AI artificial intelligence. Um, well, I think we've come across a number of uh, fantasy world robots in our past. At least I have come in my youth. Uh, so these are fantasy world robots, but guess what? You know, in the meantime, we have some real world robots. Uh, they look a little bit uh, uh, different, um, but uh, some of them you can speak to. Uh, we know them already. Some of them are in the car, and uh, some of them are cars. Uh, so, not only that, uh, we also have, uh, you know, fridges we can talk to and all kind of other appliances and mainly driven by uh, these days uh, uh, voice, voice uh, activated uh, or voice assistants which go to these appliances. 
So this is AI, as we may not be really aware, but as we are currently facing and experiencing it already in our daily lives. So these are the real world robots as opposed to the fantasy world robots. So what does that actually do? It, we can find AI, artificial intelligence, in edge devices, in cloud, and in hybrid situations. Let me just click this through. So on one side, it could be in the edge device, namely you know, the connected speaker or whatever, or the fridge itself. Um, and of course, it would send a request to the cloud and get a response from the cloud, and the actual artificial intelligence is in the cloud. Uh, for instance, the speech recognition, as you know, the, the Alexa speaker, fun, uh, it basically it wakes up, right, and then sends the request to the cloud, and what you get back is an MP3 file. It plays back an MP3 file, right? So it's not real time, uh, and, and of course, uh, for training uses, it's anyway in the cloud, and for the most part, things are stored in the cloud. The hybrid case is where we bump up the capability in the edge device with some AI in order to decide you know, how much we are actually going to send to the cloud and how much not, or what we are going to send to the cloud. You may have seen that people in security cameras, for instance, uh, I will come to that, uh, you know, uh, have some function locally, I will talk to that in more detail. So the point is that you only offload to the cloud processor what is uh, not real-time requirement and, 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 and what is more intensive as the cloud uh, device can do, but for the most part you want to handle things locally in order to get the more speedy response uh, to the customer. And of course, whatever uh, you want to do there, it then requires different ways of implementing this, as we shall see. So. The good news here about the uh, very high secure ultra low low latency 5G is that it proposes a very uh, low latency response. So when it's mission critical, it can be really fast. Some examples here, um, like I was just going to say, you know, for instance, we are already used to have uh, face detection. This is typically something which uh, a modern IP camera uh, would now do locally, maybe even part of the ISP processing. However, you know, in a security situation, like a, a secure cameras uh, in a professional use, they want to uh, real, uh, recognize people and make sure that they can track people. So that is then something which has to happen in the cloud. So that is where your hybrid uh, case come in. So fundamentally, you are creating a fingerprint very quickly uh, uh, locally and get a very quick response as well. And uh, once it's sent to the uh, cloud, uh, we can have uh, additional functions uh, uh, such as the video analytics and so on. On the right hand side you can see a little bit of uh, people uh, actual implementation that's actually a, a retail analytics so uh, if you go to Walmart you may find some of those on the roof looking as to analyzing how people walk and trying to track so they can optimize the layout so we can all buy more right um, this is uh, the, uh, the, the famous, uh, okay, for us in imagination, famous, uh, let, let's try this. We are, we are testing machine learning with this. What is this? A banana. Very good. Why do I teach my GPU to tell me that? Uh, anyway, that is what we call the banana recognition. Actually, we've taken the GPU, run an SDK, and uh, implemented a neural network so it can take an existing GPU, which you may have on an application processor, at the moment where you don't do graphic to, to use the neural network artificial intelligence. That's why we show this here. So be assured that our GPU can recognize a banana. In case of uh, IoT, uh, we typically have uh, three components when it comes to, uh, to today's product. Now, obviously, we are techie guys. We're talking about IPs and chips and PCBs. Of course, uh, real people talk about real products, but fundamentally think of this as a product without the cabinet. But almost nobody these days goes out there and buys something with it which doesn't come with an app, right? We used to go to a shop, buy something, that's it. Now, we expect it to come A, with an app, and B, have a cloud function. And this, has a, this is talking about uh, uh, storage and analytics. Um, oh, oops, one more, sorry. Uh, talking about storage and analytics, but sometimes, as you know very well from uh, existing examples, 
the product becomes better over time because we teach it stuff. For instance, uh, uh, Alexa, uh, the Echo speaker, now has much more skills than it had a year ago, right? Um, so the point is that with IoT, in the combination of some sort of sufficient hardware in the node or the uh, local gateway, together with an app and a cloud, we can actually sell something which we can ha enhance over time and debug if it's not ready, right? Anyway, so that is the three components, uh, node gateway, cloud and app, together they make the product. So what's inside the smart thing from an IP perspective? Uh, remember, we are the IP guys. I'll just click that through here. Excuse me. Sorry. Um, so on one hand, at, at the node, at the edge, we may have just what we call a smart sensor. It basically has a sensor, obviously, temperature, you know, uh, uh, whatever, uh, proximity, pressure, humidity, um, a microcontroller unit um, with a little bit of uh, uh, analytics maybe on, as a piece of software and, of course, some connectivity. We call that a smart sensor. Uh, in the middle, we classify, we, we, we take this, beef it up a little bit, and add audio, uh, such as a voice engine or an AI engine, uh, mostly a uh, single core processor. And then uh, on the right-hand side, for what we call a, a smart high-performance processor, anything which, you know, up there, including video, some analytics locally, uh, audio dedicated DSP, up to what, we are known, what is known as an application processor. You heard that new speakers just have a, a, a previous phone processor as application processor. That would be one of these. Um, here are some examples. I won't bore you too much, but again, you know, MIPS, one of our latest uh, cores uh, with the hardware uh, uh, virtualization controller cores have been deployed by chip makers like Altair, uh, module makers like Telit and Sierra, and used and, and, and uh, compliance tested with AT&T and Verizon in applications for LTE-based IoT applications like the ones you see here, anywhere from water meters to pellets, consumer devices, and home automation. So we have some real-life experience of doing th this. Uh, another example, just briefly to share with you here, is a, a microchip a PIC32 microcontroller. Uh, again, a very low-power uh, uh, microcontroller with the MIPS core. And uh, uh, we have been working with a company called Medium One Cloud, who provides some uh, cloud and a mobile app. Together, we can have this kit for people to move very quickly to do a connected device. Moving up a notch, as an example here, again, this is the one uh, where you take the, the, uh, a more beefed up uh, processor with an FPU, such as a gigahertz. Uh, uh, clock and add some dedicated audio stuff. That is an example of an Ingenic processor here. I won't go too much detail, just saying that's an example of where we've been deployed. And here's another example of surveillance cameras which have been based on another processor for, by Ingenic. Could be anything such as the ISP, encoder, GPUs, and so on, uh, with multiple sensors uh, doing uh, multiple standards and uh, you know, uh, co uh, co doing a multiple type of connectivity here. That's just another example of a surveillance camera where MIPS and our other IPs have been de deployed in the field. Okay, so as far as I'm concerned, when we have a smart, cute, cute smart thing, that's how it looks like. It has multiple sensors, it has connectivity engines, it has of course a CPU, and it's intelligent and it can have a voice engine with multiple far field recognition microphones. That's it. What is your smart thing? Thank you. <laughs>